everybody. I'm here. My name is Judith Merkinson. I'm the president of the Comfort Women Justice Coalition in San Francisco. And I'm here with a fellow member, Melissa Torres, who's also a member of Gabriella USA. And we're here to talk about the outrageous um, practice of the Philippine government, which the other day took down, actually took down and removed the beautiful statue that they had erected to the memory of the comfort women. And I know, Melissa, you actually visited that statue. Can you talk about it? Yes, um, it, it is strange that the government said they were doing, uh, taking it down for piping because there was no you need for that. There was a comfort station, like a bathroom next to it. And if you go to the Philippines, you know that you don't flush the toilet. You put water into the toilet because there are no pipes. So it's very strange and, and just a false lie that they took it down to relay pipes. And secondly, it was just a really moving and beautiful statue. It's right on Roxas Boulevard. It faces the city, but it's right on the Manila Bay. And it, it's just really sad that it was taken down in the middle of the night um, without telling any of the stakeholders that they were taking it down. Yeah, well, it's very interesting to me that they had to do it in the middle of the night mm -hmm. because totally sneaking around. And, you know, really what they're doing is they're cooperating in the denial of history. It's it's very um, disturbing. You know, the Japanese government keeps saying the matter is settled. And even if it was settled, which it isn't. You can't settle sexual slavery. You can't settle enforced rape. You can't have any even reconciliation if you don't admit the truth. And by removing the statue and insisting that these statues be removed, it's just another example of historical denialism. And it's very dangerous that the Philippines actually gave into this. Why do you think they did it? For many reasons, one, um it's hard because Japan, uh, like the Philippines is trying to rely on Japan and China for financial reasons, for all these different reasons. And the foreign affairs secretary also claimed that why inflame this issue when this issue is already settled. And this, that's, that's just not true. My grandmother was a comfort woman. She died, and I'm going to cry now, she died without ever coming forward with this truth because of how painful it is and how much shame it is for women to come forward. And the women who are comfortable women now, they're just solely dying. No, they have no support from the government. They have no, Lila Filipina is the one organization, Gabriella is the one organization, is like supporting the women, but they don't have enough resources from the government. So it's just, it just shows that the reason why they took it in the middle of the night was because, I mean, they also informed the Jap Japanese embassy that they were taking it down. So it, it just shows that they're supporting the Japanese embassy and, and doing their commands for for those reasons. I mean, basically, I think it's giving up their even Philippine sovereignty, mm -hmm, you know? Exactly. They're, they're betraying the memory of their own people, of the over 1,000 women, Filipino women, who were sec officially sexually enslaved. That doesn't even include the yeah. thousands of Filipinos who were raped, who were tortured during World War II, nor does it acknowledge the fact that probably hundreds of thousands of Philippine women have been sexually used by the American military in the bases, nor does it actually shine light on the fact that the Philippines is one of the largest exports, exporters mm -hmm. of women. In fact, women are their most important product. Right. So all these things, it's like the statue actually makes it possible to discuss these things. Right lifts the shame. I mean, it's ironic that when women get raped, we're the ones that are blamed. <laughs> Carry the shame. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. And actually these statues lift the shame and say, this happened and we have to prevent it from happening ever again. And I think, uh, you know, it was really heartening to see that that statue right. came up and that it was an original statue. It's very beautiful. It's, it's both, so sort of, it says, this horrible thing happened, but here we are. And that's very much like the statue that we have in San Francisco. Exactly, right. And the, the strength of this statue is that it was dressed in a Maria Clara traditional mm -hmm. dress. Right. She's grabbing her camisa and she looks. she's looking forward to the city and she's actually looking forward to the Japanese embassy. And her face is not of anger, it's not even of like 
of hatred, like the Japanese people are trying to say, oh, only some of them, but it's, it's recognizing that this happened and it's this morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if we don't recognize what happened, then it will just happen over and over again. And the memory, you know, the Philippine Lolas came out very quickly after Hak Soon Kim, and mm -hmm. they were very, very brave. But as you said, they're they're really old, and they're slowly dying. Many, you know, every day or every week, another comfort former comfort woman, a survivor, passes away, and we have to give them justice. And by doing this, we're denying them justice. We're denying women all over the world justice. And it's really outrageous. Right. We're silencing them again. Yeah. Like it took for so much for them to come forward. They gave up so much. Some families actually um, rejected them after they came forward. And by taking down the statue, we're literally reiterating that we just don't care. That this happened. Exactly. You know, I think it's really significant that Duterte was the one who, you know, his government yeah. was the one that took down the statue. After all, he's the one who basically condones rape. Mm -hmm. He told, he told in terms of the insurgency that's still happening in the Philippines, he said, shoot the women gorillas in the vagina. Mm -hmm. I mean, who says that? And he has outwardly said he's a fascist. That mm -hmm. he says, I'm a fascist. We're not putting words in his mouth. And here he is joining with another right wing government of Abe in mm -hmm. Japan. And we see that this is happening, like denialism is happening all over the world. The issue of fake news, this is mm -hmm. really fake news, is happening right. all over the world. And, you know, at the one, on the one hand, women like the Me Too movement and other movements throughout the world are talking about sexual harassment, sexual violence, and justice for women. And at this time, it's ridiculous to tear down statues over Japan to deny what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, yeah. And the other thing I, I think that we have to be very clear as the Comfort Women Justice Coalition is that our statue in San Francisco will never be taken down. I don't think that the people of San Francisco would allow it, but we will certainly make sure, and we're saying this to the Japanese government, to the Japanese consulate, to the Japanese embassy, our statue is there. The three girls, women, because most of the uh, comfort women were girls who represent China, the Philippines and Korea, they are gonna be there for decades to come, looking out at San Francisco and telling people that sexual violence is a crime against humanity and mm -hmm. we will not tolerate it. And I hope that, you know, we can build so that no more statues will ever be removed. Yes, exactly. So I, <laughs> yeah, I think we basically covered it and Comfort Women Justice Coalition will be on Facebook Live talking about all the issues of the day, especially those concerning women, in the next weeks to come. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>